to them. They barricaded it. They strategically stopped food and water to go inside there. And they hemmed them in. The Jews were not getting it. The Jews didn't listen to Jesus' warnings. Listen to this. The end result was 1,100,000 Jews were killed. It took about two weeks to destroy the temple and the city of Jerusalem. They burnt it down in two weeks. The city was burnt down to the ground. 100,000 Jews were taken captive, enslaved. 985 cities and villages outside of the perimeter of, of Jerusalem that had the vast population were Jewish people. They were also massacred. And so there was a lot of Jews, even though they were warned, uh, they did not heed the warning. However, and here's the twist. <clears throat> there was a Christian population in Jerusalem. And the Christian population heeded the words of Jesus Christ back in uh, when Jesus spoke, when Jesus was speaking 37 years prior. And, and they rehearsed it, and they talked about it. For years prior to the uh, uh, the, the 70 AD, for years prior to it, they talked among that it's going to come a day during this generation that Jerusalem is going to be attacked and destroyed, that we're going to have to run. The Jews didn't listen, but the Christians did. I'm going to prove that to you on the next page. I'm going to read to you two small little paragraphs that I handwritten extracted out of two uh, commentaries. One from the late 1700s and one from the late 1800s, Adam Clark, and the first one is uh, a guy named Cruz, Christian Cruz, C-R-U-S-E. Uh, I'll read that to you in a minute. So the Christians, they were prepared to flee, and they knew the warning signs, and they waited on it. So when the time came and they saw the signs that were developing that Jesus mentioned, they all began to sell their properties, the Christians did, not the Jews, and they sold their homes, and they packed up their bags, and they moved. Most of the Christians moved, according to history, to a city in Jordan, not Petra, but a place called P-E-L-L-A, Jordan. It's either Pia or Pella. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I know that in Spanish or Latin, two L's together is like a ya, yeah, but if I'm going to say it like a Yankee, it's, it's Pella. You know, that's pretty much how you would say it. So they relocated in the entire, yes? Is there any chance that this group was called the Way? No. Baron, I am sorry. I answered too fast. I don't know. <laughs> I answered too fast. But I, I did a lot of reading. I mean, okay, I'm, a lot of reading. I never came across that. But it is the way, the truth, of life. I don't know. So, all the signs were there. The Christians took heed. They fled. They relocated. But no Jew heeded the warnings of Jesus Christ. Jesus said these words, and I read that to you. Do not come back for anything. Do not return even for a coat. It also said, he also said, if you're on the rooftops, don't come down to the house. See, they had those rooftops that were flat, and they'd jump from rooftop to rooftop, and often they, in, in the cool evening, they would sit upstairs, and they would, uh, up on the roof, and they would drink their tea or whatever, uh, or, and they would, they would drink wine, and they would associate with their, well, you can literally run down the entire street on rooftops. And that's what he was saying, when you're on the run, don't come down, but run on these flat roofs and, and run to the mountains. Here's something I didn't know. It's not in the Bible. However, it is annotated in the commentaries. You're gonna have to read the commentaries because there's just too many footnotes for it. And it says this, a word of an, uh, from an angel told them, it's time to leave Jerusalem, run to the mountains, and they all were already ready. They were already sold everything. They were already packed. And many of them had already been going to Pila. They fled. The Romans burnt down the temple. There wasn't a stone on top of another stone. The reason why 
is because a lot of it had gold in it. And so they chipped the gold out of the blocks. That's why a stone was not on top of another stone. And so uh, the only thing that was left was an exterior wall, not part of the temple, but an exterior wall that you see today is called the, the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall. Also, the Jews that did escape, they scattered all over the world. No Jew was allowed to ever return after the raising, R-A-Z-I-N-G. After the raising of Jerusalem, no Jew was allowed to come back in. As a matter of fact, they were not organized as a Jewish people to come back in for another 1,800 years in that date, 1945, where they became a nation all over again. But the Christians, when they escaped, they thrived. Not the Jewish people. When the Jewish people, they stayed and did not heed the words of Jesus Christ, they died. Here's the two commentaries, if you'll allow me to read it. The first one is uh, by Christian F. Cruz, C-R-U-S-E. And it's his ecclesiastical history. He has many history books. That's what he did. He was a historian. The whole body, however, of the, of the church at Jerusalem had been commanded by a divine revelation given to men of approved piety there before the war, in other words, 780, to remove themselves from the city, and they dwelt at a certain town beyond the Jordan River called Pila. And I'm going to read Adam Clark, a Christian escape. That was pretty much the beginning of this. Here's what Adam Clark said. He has his own commentary. It says is this. It is very remarkable that not a single Christian perished in the destruction of Jerusalem. Though there were many there with uh, Cestius Gallus invested the city and had preserved in the siege. I'm going to take that sentence out because it's not helping me. He would soon have rendered himself master of Jerusalem. But he unexpectedly and uncommonly raised the, 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 the siege. The Christians took opportunity to escape. General Titus approached with his army. All who believed in Christ left Jerusalem and fled to Pila and other places beyond the Jordan River. And so they marvelously escaped general shipwreck of their country. Not one Christian perished. The flight of the Christians took place in 66 AD, three and a half to four years before the attack of General Titus. Isn't that remarkable? <clears throat> it might be uh, a type and shadow here, but I'm going to just keep on with my notes, watching the clock here. This warning that I'm suggesting to you still stands today. Because this is a dual pro prophecy in this chapter 24 that I've been preaching to you for 21 years. But I've been preaching this since 1978. The whole idea that I prophesied, well, did not prophesy, did a study and predicted that Donald Trump's horn would be broken. And I stood here in front of you in January of 2020, before COVID. Before, when everybody was saying that he's going to get reelected, which my, my prediction would have been fine had he been reelected. But I said that according to Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 9, that his horn would be broken after he knocks over the ram, which is Iran, that he himself will fall as fast as he rose. And so far, so good. I'm still pretty much the only one here standing about this, and I'm not a holder honor uh, for those of you that are hanging on for Donald Trump to overthrow the government. I'm still thinking, do you remember the map I put on the wall where it was gonna, the United States divided into four quadrants? Right. I'm still believing that he's probably going to be the leader of one of those quadrants, and there's going to be three other leaders. How that's going to be done, I do not know. And that among one of those leaders that's going to rise up, there's going to be a little horn that's going to rise up from one of those quadrants. And that little horn is going to go over to the Middle East. And that little horn is the Antichrist. Mm. 
I'm not saying that Donald Trump is the Antichrist, and neither are the four in the Antichrist, but there's going to be a little one that's going to come out from it. And he is not going to be appreciated at the beginning, uh, but that goes into chapter 9 of the book of Daniel. And we had, do you remember, 330-something thousand views, hits on that, and they call me everything, pa a pastor called me a scumbag, and it was like as if I was anti-Trump, or I wasn't anti-Trump, you know that. And I tried to put out another video to explain once again what the horn being broke meant. And it was, seemed like it was a little bit more accepted. I, I still stand before you as believing that Matthew 24 is happening right now. Its warnings are standing still today. That you and I need to flee this world. And don't look back. Some of us here, I've got one foot in the house and one foot on the road. Which one are you going to choose? Because he's saying, don't go back into the house and get a coat. Run to the mountains. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. And how we do that is we've got to get our minds, our hearts, our souls away from the world. Um, the Jewish people, the reason why they were fought against, and this is going to hurt some of your feelings right here, but just take it for whatever it's worth. This is going to help you. The Jewish people were rebelling against the government. They were doing everything they could. The newspapers, the media, the Facebooks that they had, the, the social media, everything they had, I'm making all that up. They were doing all they can to talk smack about the government and about their taxes, and, and about the the, the, uh, the the poor, rogue way that they were being treated as Jews. They fought the government, they rebelled, they refused to obey the laws, and they didn't pay the taxes. And the Romans, the government, slowly and systematically began to kill every one of them. What was the church doing all at the same time? None of that. None of it. What they were doing is no rebellion, no fighting, no breaking laws, no attacking, just waiting upon the Lord. Okay. Noah had ample time. He was given one week. God put him in the ark for one week, shut the door before the rain came down. The idea that it was raining on their heads and they ran into the ark and shut the door is not biblical. It was a sunny, sunny day, and they got in a week before the door shut, and they're sitting in there for a whole week. So it is even with uh, Lot's family. There wasn't a single match dropped from heaven on fire until Lot's family got out. Same thing with other things. You know what? You know when, um, just as a sidebar, um, what's his name? Um, Jonah. You remember when Jonah was mad at God he, he, and God had to bring him to Nineveh in a belly of a whale? And do you know why he was mad really at God? Watch this. This has a lot to do with some of these prophets that are prophesying okay. and they're getting it wrong. All right. Jonah was really mad at God because he knew that God would not fulfill the prophecy if they repented. Mm. Here was the prophecy, and this is all he said. Yet in 40 days... Nineveh shall be destroyed. So in 40 days, Nineveh wasn't destroyed. He looked like an idiot. He, he had um, mud on his face. Uh, he, he was a false prophet, if you would. And, and this goes along with many of the prophets that you're listening to right now. That many of them are men of God. But they shouldn't attach a time to it. When the guy uh, from Florida, or wherever, um, where's that guy from that? The guy with the calendar punching it. Kentucky. Uh, I, I believe that the things that he was saying, some of it, but if he put times on it, he put a calendar on it, and, and right when it didn't happen in those days, we just blew him off. If he would have just shut his trap about November, December, January, and then all that, and just told everybody what his dream was without all that stuff, then we would have possibly believed him a little bit more. So 
He was right, yet in 40 days, Nineveh shall be destroyed. And then people repented, and God changed his mind. Made him look like a false prophet. Made him look like he had egg on his face. So, uh, Noah fled. Lot's family fled. Of course, they were constrained, but they fled. And I'm asking you, for those of you that are really not in the church much anymore, you're half in and half out. You look more worldly than you look Christian. You talk more worldly than you are Christian. You look like you're at a party and you're not at church. <laughs> and you're mad at the government. <laughs> you sound just like the Jews here. It, what are you doing? You're going the wrong way. We're being besieged. We're being surrounded. And I'm telling you as a pastor, a man of God in your life, an influence in your life, a, a voice in your life, flee, run, get away from this stuff. Stop watching so much news, it's going to destroy you. Stop doing these uh, joining together rebellions and start to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ because he told you already, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. There are people in this room that are not going to get raptured. You're staying behind. Do you need attention, Rick? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see a lot of the population fleeing. The Jews know how to flee. The Jews are fleeing from France and also Europe because of anti-Semitism. In Central Africa right now, there's 185,000 so far in population fleeing from election violence. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah. Election violence. There's populations all in Central Africa. You all has said the following, that there's a lot of fleeing from liberal cities and liberal states. Now we have this big campaign in Texas, leave your, your garbage in California, leave your garbage in New York, and you got billboards and all that stuff going, I'm with you. I'm down here voting like a Republican like you are. But if you got a whole bunch of Californians coming down here, they're going to defecate on our streets and they're going to just put in whoever they want, but that's not my fight. I do my, my citizenship, I do my, my, my responsibilities, I vote, I, I share, but I am not rebelling. And this is a country that I am not the citizenship of in true life. Amen. In the real world, heaven, I'm a citizen of another country. Amen. So they're tracking, you all is tracking people. Guess where the center, and it's not Texas, the center of all the fleeing is going. Cleveland, Tennessee, not Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Tennessee, which is surrounded by mountains. This is what U-Haul says. The Bible says about worldly people and worldly companies that the, the children of the world are wiser than the children of light. They know where everybody's going. To continue, 79.5 million people are fleeing worldwide. All because of voting. All because of over overthrows. 26 million are refugees in stateless or count countryless, nationless people. 1% of the entire world right now is running, including America. Now this is going to hit home for those of you that are Republicans. Tens of thousands of Republicans are fleeing the GOP. In California, 33,000 so far Republicans have pulled out of the Republican Party. 
Pennsylvania, 12,000. Arizona, 10,000. A total GOP population of 25 states is 140,000 Republicans pulling out, and they're all saying there's nothing left of the GOP party. I hate to tell you where I'm getting this sighting because you're not going to believe everything I just said, but I got that from the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> and here it comes, everybody. Okay. They're seeing a new party rise. I'm going to say to you, I'm seeing a new government rise. Mm -hmm. My prediction? Donald Trump is sitting behind his desk in Florida. He's just waiting for the impeachment to go one way or another. Mm -hmm. When it's over, he's going to stand up and he's going to stop making some noise. He's going to assemble all kinds of ambassadors. He's going to send them to the Middle East. He's going to have a big voice. He's going to have 70 million people <coughs> follow him. Not to mention the international fans that he has as well. Something big is happening. And the church needs to be the church. Yeah. Okay. Yes. If you're a Trumper, I congratulate you. I'm a Trumper too. Mm -hmm. If you're a Biden guy, I, you're not really Biden. You're somebody else that's behind taking all those things. Amen. I don't mean to insult you. I'm just telling you, we in this world, here comes everybody, we do not have a leader. Amen. Europe doesn't have a leader. Nobody has a leader, except for the rogue nations, the dictators, like China, right. Russia, yeah. Putin, Chairman Xi, etc. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you and I? That the Western Hemisphere needs a leader. I propose to you that the Antichrist time is at hand. Because no matter who we put up there, there's going to be rebellion. There'll be blood in the streets. America cannot put this thing in reverse. There's something about the church that needs to be like the Christians in Jerusalem. They loved Israel. They loved Jerusalem. It was God's land. But they knew they had to go. I'm saying the same thing to you. Turn to the church. Turn to the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. Flee. I'm, I'm a patriot. Ten years military, really nine years, four months military. Honorable discharge, all kinds of good stuff that came with it. Decorated. <coughs> best speaker award of the Air Force. All that good stuff. Mm -hmm. I left in good standing. Amen. Eagle Scout. Big, big time American. Big time. VS, the VFW guy, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Board of Review, all kinds of people that have written letters to me about my, my, uh, my patriotism is in question. And when it gets down to it, Jesus has told me, mm -hmm. Mass, flee. Stop running. What does that mean to me? It might mean some physical things. It might not. It might mean stocking up. It might mean pulling things in with resources. It might. It might not. It's not like I have a lot of resources. I'm not like many of you with companies. I don't have a 401. I don't have stocks and bonds in this. I get nothing. I'm not concerned about it. Not even a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to sell everything. I'm not talking about a house and my cars. But I have to be a seller, a complete seller. Mm -hmm. Body, soul, mind, and spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to get in. Yeah. Yeah. I have to flee. Mm -hmm. I have to be part of the rapture. Can anybody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask anybody that has a comment to just raise your hand and. I'd love to address it. Um, for those of you that um, have something to add to it, or maybe um, the, the innuendos that I have here, that if perchance in 66 and a half AD, 
all the way to August of 70 AD. That was three and a half years. Is it possible that the Christians got out and escaped three and a half years before, before the end? Is it possible that that is a mid-tribulation type and shadow? I don't know. I don't know. Um, does anybody have anything? Yes. I've never shared this with anybody. Okay. Good point. Somebody else. We've been warned. That's a good word. That's a good word. And it's a Noah flood, folks. That's a good word. Somebody else. Yes. As uh, the Lord ever died, Jeremiah, I think it's 24, where he talks about the, I think it's 25, he talks about the baskets of faith. And I didn't tie that in. But if you look at it, Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Some of that stuff that you're reading is coming from China and from uh, Russia, and then jack it with your brain to get yeah. all mad and excited. Right. So you get all revolting against the American government. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, some of that stuff is real, and some of that stuff is called baloney and salami. Yeah. Yes, Question, when you talked about the four quadrants, separation of the United States and the four quadrants, is it possible that might be a reflection of both the Democrat and Republican parties breaking up into two parties or that there were four parties instead of two? Yeah, I, as I mentioned the, during that, I spent a long time on that, like a half an hour, like, you go to California, can, can you live in California? I can't live in California unless I live in a liberal area of it, but I can't live there. Um, Talk too much money. The belief system that Man. They're anti-Christian, they're anti-Bible, they're anti-conservatism, they're anti-life. Uh, I mean, it's, it's everything. And they're anti-preachers. I mean, why do I want to live there? Unless the Lord sent you there, it's another country to me. But Texas is another country to New York. Yeah. Texas and another country, mm -hmm. California. So these quadrants that I was referring to are already there. They're already separated. Yeah. It's just a matter of some official things being done. Well, I'm not sure how that can be done. I'm not smart enough for that, brother. But I am saying that this is happening. Right now it's happening. Yes, uh, Chris. I'm so sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Nick. Um, one of the things I've... Uh, Talk to, I have a lot of friends that call me, believe it or not, for Christian advice. 